Hey, so um, I've just worked out how to get... Uh... Hey, Siri, I wasn't talking to you. Thank you for recording what I'm saying. Bugger off. No problem. I didn't say that. Oh, can you see that? I said bugger off. Uh, anyway. I've just worked out how to get um, the Digitact VST with Overbridge and Overbridge drivers working so that I can record separate audio tracks in Cubase, Cubase Pro. Oh, Flocky, listen. I'm trying to do a video here. You can tell this one's not going to be very professional. Hello, cat. Okay. Now, uh, but it is going to be accurate and it is going to get you through if you're having trouble. Okay. So I'm loading up Cubase Pro. I've got my uh, Digitech working. I've got Clock Receive on already. That's what I prepared earlier. And I've also got System, USB, Config, Overbridge Mode selected. You must do those two things for this to work as specified. I'm going to create an empty project in Cubase. I'm using Cubase Pro 10. I don't see there's any reason it won't work in earlier versions as long as they've got the uh, VSTi instrument track going on. So create empty. I'm going to move through this pretty quickly. VSTi, Rack, Electron 64-bit, which I've installed earlier. I select Digitact. I hit Yes or Create, sorry, when it offers the extra MIDI track. All right, I can see that's there. This is important. Go to the little down arrow next to the word Digitac. Activate all options. Click that so that all the circles are filled. And you now have a bunch of instrument tracks. You've got Main L, which is actually your stereo out mix of everything. And then you've got each of your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight track tracks. And then you've got input L, which I guess is the input coming to the back of the device so you can sample and stuff. I'm ignoring that for now. And to save confusion, I'm going to go and mute the main L because we don't want to worry about that right now. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. And this is where it starts to actually all happen. I've selected track 1L here. And you're going to have to do this for every track at some point, And you'll see why once I've finished. First up, I'm going to create add track. I'm going to create a group track. And that group track's just going to be assigned to track 1L. And in that case, for me, it's a kick drum. Sorry, just hit a clap by accident. So anyway, what I'm doing now is I'm sectioning off the kick drum as an individual track that I can record as individual audio separate to the rest while playing them all simultaneously. So I've just hit group, stereo, stereo out, create outside folder. Now I've got to name it. And I'm just going to name it T1 group. Type in with one finger here. You could add a whole bunch of tracks now if you wanted to, but I'm just going to do one. Efficiencies will come after we learn the process. So we've got a group track there. Happy days. And we're going to route it to no bus on the stereo out for T1 group. So what I just did then is I went to T1 group. I went no bus. Bang. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is create another track, being an audio track. It's going to be audio inputs, just leave it as is, stereo, stereo out, and I'm going to call this one T1 Audio. Add track. Now, importantly, I'm going to go to the inputs for T1 Audio, see, T1 Audio, and I'm going to select for the input, Groups T1 Group. You can see what I'm doing, can't you? Basically, I've, I've created a group which was linked to the track 1L instrument. So from the instrument, I've created a group. I've taken out the output bus. I've got T1 Audio here, which is an audio track, and I've set T1 Group as the input. So track 1L instrument is basically setting signal into T1 Group, and T1 Audio is connected to T1 Group to take its signal. Now to hear it, you're going to have to press that button, or to see it in this case. What I'm going to do is just hit my play button. And you can see that that hasn't worked. So I've actually done something wrong. Ah, you can see what I've done. Track 1L, I didn't set correctly. Track 1L, which is the instrument track, I've got to select Groups T1 Group. Right, as soon as I did that, you can see what's happened. Now there's signal here and there's signal here. And if I come back, okay, I'm gonna stop my Digitact. Now when I hit record and enable that track, bang, 
two, three, and four, and. So you can see all of the tracks are lighting up individually, but T1 Audio is only metering when there's a kick sound. And you can see in the waveform of this file that it's just recording the kick. Don't believe me? Let's test it. So we go back to the start of the track. We hit, I'm going to solo this track, remove those, play. So basically what I've done is I've created an audio track for the kick drum. I would need to go do that another seven times to get all of the instrument tracks from the Digitact recording independently. But that's really not that big a deal. Uh, if you're smart, you'll probably make a template of this, save it as such in Cubase, and just have it ready to go. Uh, i got to say, super impressed by the beta that uh, Electron have been uh, working through. It's been bloody fantastic. Um, yeah, really well stated, well supported, and I hope this video helps some people out there. Bye.